Hello everybody, Joe Bay Donuts here, and welcome back for another episode of Muv Love Alternative. Last time, uh, we introduced Sumika to everyone, and, but we also had, uh, fucking flashbacks of fucking H scenes that happened in the other timelines, which, uh, yeah, that was weird. But at least we now have some idea of how they happen, and, uh, uh, but enough about that. Uh, I guess we're just fucking moving on to, uh, more... More simulator training! Oh boy, fun stuff. I don't really have much to say other than, uh, fucking weather outside sucks, so if you hear rain on all my windows or fucking lightning and thunder in the background, not much I can do about it, so fuck me, I guess I'm not going for my run tonight, also not using uh, my new scythe I got in the mail. And yes, like a full, full-on scythe like I'm a medieval farmer, because, uh, the grass in my backyard is fucking ridiculous, and it makes my electric lawnmower commit self-die. So, you know, they say you reap what you sow. In this case, I'm reaping uh, fucking three-foot-tall grass from going on vacation, and my lawnmower just can't take it. I also got a, a mini washing machine in the mail today, too. It's like like a little below thigh height. can fit in my bathroom upstairs, I can just throw it in the tub and do all my laundry there. Instead of having to go to the laundromat, because, man, fuck that place. That place sucks. It's pretty pretty good on money, though. It's only, like, two bucks to wash, and I have a dryer here already. God, all my fucking headphone cables are everywhere today. What the fuck's going on? Fuck. All right. Let's just, let's just start. Fuck it. We'll do it live. I'm real glad you didn't. Uh, same here, honestly. Yeah, that, that ain't my thing. That ain't my thing, guys. I'm also not a feet guy, so... I think we're... We, I think we were all pretty giddy about that. Also, I hope this is... This still should be the, uh, the director's cut patch, because... I don't know, my computer fucking did a big update. And Steam fucking freaked itself out, and I had to re uh, free select all the directories and stuff for my games. So, yeah, it's, it had all my saves. So fingers crossed. You Thank you, ma'am. Oh, they really did an awesome job. Everyone seems to be brimming with confidence now. Now that we've got definitive intel on each and every hive, and we know uh, they're building us another Susanna O, our team's morale is at an all-time high. And after getting results like that, well, I think anyone would get a little cocky. Yep, practice like we play. Yes, ma'am. Damn, only fucking two hours to get them up and running? Nice. Uh, so they finished the overall, huh? Uh, then I guess we'll finally be piloting TSS with live uh, S11s. I gotta admit, I'm a little nervous about it. Just don't touch the big red button. Yes, ma'am. Huh, I didn't know Sumika's simulator could do that. The interior of it looks pretty identical to ours, so it's weird to think it would have all sorts of unique little... Uh, oh wait, she doesn't need to use the physical controls at all. Duh, the cockpit's probably just for show, isn't it? Uh, that makes a lot more sense. Sure, everyone knows the Susanna O is different from t traditional TSFs, but it raised a few eyebrows, so she didn't at least have basic control sticks in there. Uh, that must be why our, why they designed it to look just like ours. Interesting choice that she has her own specially designed fortified suit. 
probably for interfacing with the Susano O, but still. They could have at least made it the same colors so it doesn't draw any extra attention. Sorry, Makoto, I wasn't even listening to what you're saying at all. Uh, no, 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 no. I can believe they've already bonded so much in just one day. Uh, they were already being nice to her because she's a newcomer, but after seeing her fight, they're clearly fascinated by her combat abilities as well. I mean, that's perfectly normal, of course. I certainly got a different reception in this timeline compared to the previous one. Just say like, yeah, at the training range or whatever when they're building it. ボクも Okay, this conversation is starting to veer into some dangerous territory. Maybe I should interject here. What does it feel like to fly in? What does it feel? Okay. Oh, fuck. What am I doing? I'm just fucking skipping all over the place. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, nice and cluster up, I knew it could count on you. I was 100% just spaced out, just reading. まあ、そうだよね。ごめんね。鏡、気にするでない。そなたは軍人として正しい対応をしただけだ。さあさあ、気にしないで。私にしてみれば聞くのはただだからさ。つい調子に乗っちゃうんだよね。じゃあ、次
Joe Zen, 30th anniversary, uh, Jumai Jingo, is from Shirataki Brewery, Niigata, Japan. Hey, we were just there the other day in, he, uh, in uh, fucking Muv Love. Uh, with gratitude and a desire to reach as many sake lovers as possible in the midst of this pandemic. Oop, don't bring that up on YouTube, won't get monetization. Uh, we have released the sake to celebrate 30 years of Joe Zen, uh, says Shintaro Takahashi, the president of Shirataki Shuzo. Uh, certain members, da da da. This breezy brew is best chilled to highlight its mango, peach, and mochi aromas. Ooh, very nice. It elegantly unfolds to reveal flavors of fresh, pillowy cream and melons. Ooh, that sounds very nice. Pair this light sake with seafood, uh, yeah, some kind of pasta, California rolls, and potato salad. Ooh, what a fucking wine mom sake. Next up, we have, uh, Amabuki Chokarakuchi Nama Tobetsu Junmai. Holy shit, that's a mouthful. From Amabuki Brewery Saga Japan. Hey, hey, I know that place. Uh, running on the coattails of of uh, my th uh, da -da -da themed dry sake. Here comes an extra dry sake from Saga. Wataru uh, Hosokawa of Amabuki says this is says it's an important to offer dry sake that's balanced with plenty of umami derived from rice, in this case from uh, Yamada Nishiki. A uh, uh, slightly floral and tart aroma rises thanks to the use of ben... Ooh. begonia yeast. Okay. Hosokawa-san recommends the sake with saga favorites, including raw squid and wagyu. Chill the sake well to bring uh, and bring it to your next summer barbecue. Well, I won't be having any of these right now because uh, I learned during the alternative. Nope, this is the alternative. I made this mistake last time. Uh, the unlimited uh, episodes that no longer exist. Yeah, I don't. I don't record very good when I'm drinking. I tend to get like all stuttery and go off on more tangents than I normally do, just like this. Uh, yeah. So enough about me being an alcoholic. Let's uh, let's get back to the game. All right. Time for me to join in. Oh, sounds like you guys are having fun. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> oh god. <coughs> That's what I get <coughs> for trying to laugh. Looks like I mean it. Got under your skin, huh? I could tell. Ah, uh, trust me. I totally feel your pain, but it's best to just give up. Uh, you ever heard of a thing called survival of the fittest? Huh? Saying you're getting flabby. And Squad 207B, it's Law of the Jungle. The Law of the Jungle is in full effect. You guys over in uh, 207A may have had a more organized social structure, but ours was a wasteland where only the most brutal of monsters got to stay. Don't feel bad that you can't hang. Oh. Uh, if anything, it just goes to show that you're far more civilized than us. You should be proud. Hey, nice job, class rep. You didn't even flinch. Oh, you really are getting better. Tama, I'm proud of you for standing up for what you believe in. But you kind of missed the point. Uh, not quite, Makoto. I mean, you're definitely getting warmer, but still. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, took you guys long enough. Nope. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Sumika? These guys are pretty crazy, huh? Uh, um, I guess she's still pretty nervous. It's only her second day, so I can't really blame her. I'm sure it would be different if Kazumi were here with us. <laughs> uh, 
この者がいなくとも先ほどのように私たちが笑い合えるようになったのはタケルのおかげなのだ。Whoa, where's this coming from? You're hyping me up way too much. 何に照れてるのよ。本当のことでしょ、小隊長。When are you gonna stop calling me that? Takeru san was so yate, Mina no kincho, who goes to credit in this year, eh? Eh? Ah, come on, guys. This is getting weird. Can we stop talking about this? Killing me here. Sonata, Takeru to Tokshunimo, Tomonisu Kikai Moino de Aro. Don't you, Saza and Nigiakana no de Arona? Eh? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. We didn't get her spun up on the, on the fucking on the lie. Must it touch it the Koto Kikutsumori Monakata Noda? Yurusgayo Sona Betsuni. May is really trying to talk with Sumika, but it's not going that well. I can't really tell if that's because of that image Sumika saw or just because she's nervous. I mean, he's He's kind of a hotshot. He's pretty cool in, in this timeline. Like, when you get to know him, he's he's kind of he's kind of a wimpy bum. But that's just kind of like, oh, he's he's so cool. But you know, he has a soft, a soft empathetic side. Uh huh. Uh, that wasn't very nice, Suzumiya. Words can hurt, you know. You know, how would you know? Ano. どうした私そろそろ行くねあ、あの福祉例のところへ行かなきゃならないからはあ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
but I guess it's the kind of grunt work that ultimately helps our unit work so efficiently on the battlefield. Uh, while each subordinate works independently to eliminate their mistakes, the flight commander works under the assumption that everyone will mess up at some point and develops contingency plans accordingly. Like Lieutenant Hayase once said, it's crazy to think that Captain Izumi was able to fulfill the, uh, all the duties of being a unit commander without ever letting any of us see how difficult it was. Now that I'm in a similar position, I can truly appreciate how impressive that is. Though, I guess it only makes sense that she'd uh, take it seriously. She said she'd lost several of her subordinates before. One wrong order could get somebody killed, and it won't always be at the hands of the enemy. After all, the further into the hive we go, uh, the less space we'll have to maneuver, making the root, uh, root third forward field of the Susanna O a threat as well. In fact, two of our failures today were due to uh, most of our escorts coming too close to the Ruther, uh, whew, Ruther Ford Field and self-destructing, leaving the Susanna O a sitting duck for the Beta to swarm in and capture. Even if the 17 times we were successful, not everyone survived. We never had a perfect survival rate, not even once. In a world like this, it doesn't matter whether the surface pilots survive for a mission to be considered a success. It's just an added bonus that they do. Man, dude, my reading? Garbage. Absolute garbage. Uh, not that I thought the first lieutenants were just writing off our lives, of course, but today was the first time I saw just how much work they put into keeping us safe. This isn't the sort of job you can give to a person who's too preoccupied with their own issues. I definitely understand what Lieutenant Munakata meant now. She told me that I'd already grown enough, but since I'd only been given half the duties of a real flight commander, I definitely still have a long way to go. Sure, I'm Storm Vanguard 1 and all, but Lieutenant Hayase has been juggling her duties as unit commander while also maintaining her position as the unit's strongest pilot. I still can't compete with her. But I do want to reach her level, and I hope I can get there soon. Takeru. Huh? Yeah, I was in a meeting with the other flight commanders. Uh, seems like they're working through dinner. Uh, but hey, don't just stand there. Have a seat. Uh, so hey, I wanted to thank you. Well, I can tell you're really making an effort to help Sumika feel welcome. I don't really know if she's still nervous about all this or not, but I'd appreciate it if you kept that up. Mm. I should probably tell Maya more about Sumika, even if I, even if it has to be fairly vague. Sumika saw that image that flashed through my mind, so we really need Maya to get along with her. And more importantly, I wouldn't want to keep my uh, guiding light completely in the dark. <laughs> It's... Honestly, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty good mixture of both. Huh? And sprinkle a little bit of that on top. Why is she asking that? How much does Maya know? Yeah, so... About that. Ah, damn it, she beat me to the punch. This is awkward. <laughs> What? Huh? D does it look like I am? Yeah, I know. I don't know if it's the right word, but I don't know. No, it doesn't matter how she figured it out. It has always treated me the same way, no matter what world or situation we found ourselves in. Even when I was making a total ass of myself, spouting off my uninformed opinions like a kid throwing a tantrum, she never gave up on me. Even when I convinced myself that I was the only one who could save the world, and everyone else was just an obstacle. Even when I abandoned everything after having my whole world flipped upside down. 
has always been there to tell me what I need to hear without, with complete and total honesty. Uh, no matter what she was going through in her own life, and no matter how much pain she was in. So, the least I can do is show her the same respect, and be up front with her as I possibly can. Ah, you're right. I'm in love with Sumika. No, it's fine. You're fine. I just thought it might make things a little awkward if I spelled it out that plainly. Really? Yeah, it's better just to get the big gut punch out of the way instead of having it fucking death by a thousand cuts over the months you guys are working together. Yeah, on second thought, she's probably right. When you don't know for sure, you tend to tiptoe around the subject, and that, make things, that makes things a lot more awkward for both parties. Uh, the night after Operation 21st, do you remember how I was telling you I found a tangible reason for fighting? Uh, back then, I couldn't put it any other way, but the fact that Sumika even existed was uh, still top secret. Uh, but I promise I wasn't... よい。皆まで言うな。誰もそなたが個人感情を優先したとか、公私たちにそう思わせるのだ。ああ。鏡とは再び巡り会えて。本当によかったな。は鏡とは再び巡り会えて。本当によかったな。メイヤ。訓練
perfectly overlap and it's just a one big circle. Yeah, it is. この前の<笑> Uh, thanks, Maya. I'm really lucky to have such amazing friends. Yep. All just friends. Ah, there's always been so much on my plate that I couldn't tell anyone about. What with the alternative program, the double O unit, not to mention the fact that I've traveled between worlds and looped through time as the, cons as the causality conductor. And since it's such a pain to keep track of what's kosher to talk about and what's not, I think that maybe I figured it would be easier just not tell anyone anything at all. In retrospect, I sure wish I talked more about my problems to these guys and just let left out the classified parts. Why was I so determined to handle it all on my own anyway? I should have had more faith than everyone else. I think uh, that was just me being pretentious as per usual, which means May has hit the nail on the head yet again. She really is, oh, my guiding light. <laughs> おなじ任務 さかきたちもそなたと鏡の姿に心打たれるのであろうな。well, I guess I was just too preoccupied to be careful as I to be as careful as I should have been. Ah, Hatakara Mite Demo, Kino Dokuna Hodo Datazo. Ah, seriously? Was it really that obvious? Kagami and Christmas present or Kanga de Rutokino Sonata no Hokegawa, Ima de Mosre Kotoga de Kinna. Come on, no reason to remember that. Yoroini, XM3 no Kogi or Shira de Tasaimo, Toksunimu to Yeba Yoimono. Uh, let's forget that one too, shall we? Sakusen to Oh, yeah, dude. I was totally stunned. Though, I think I was even more surprised that you developed such strong feminine intuition. Sonata, Baka ni stay in Oka? What is that the Ichio on Nadazo? So no on no Kangura, Mochia was at all. Which is why you're being petty and getting your revenge right now? No, oh, trust me. I'm well aware. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. You know, I'm just joking around. Huh? In what department? In the recognizing her as a woman department who is pining for your affection. Man, why do you have to be like that? <laughs> I know I got flustered over Maya taking the initiative on this one, but I still need to make an effort to tell her more about Sumika, even if I have to be vague. I really want Maya to understand her better. I'm not doing this as a as a penance or anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and embarrass myself even further here, if that's alright. I mean, don't get me wrong. I realize it's super lame of me to turn around and spill our whole backstory to you immediately after you busted me, but I still think it's the right thing to do. Uh, 
obviously, there's still a ton of stuff about Sumika that's secret, so I can't give you all the details, but I've been relying on that excuse for far too long. Uh, like you said before, I've been operating under a lot of false assumptions thus far. I had a hard time telling the difference between confiding in you guys and being dependent on you. So, if you'd rather I not say anything, I won't, but I would like to tell you, as proof that I believe you when you say you believe in me. I want you to understand some things about the two of us, and if it's okay with you, I want you to keep them in mind when you're dealing with her. <laughs> yeah, I know I always remember. What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Of course. I can't put my feelings before my duties. Uh, don't worry. I won't betray your trust. Alright, this is gonna take a while. I guess I should probably start from the beginning. Uh, Sumiko was my next door neighbor growing up. We never spent a day apart until around three years ago. Yeah, we did. But then, one day, the two of us got separated, and I became convinced that Sumiko was no longer in this world. A lot of things happened in the years after that, and then two months ago, Yuko-sensei took me in and enrolled me in our basis training academy. During basic training, she had me help out with some of her experiments on the side, and that's when I came up with the XM3. You know most of this already, though, so I'm just gonna skip over it. After Sergeant Jinkuchi's death, I tried to escape the pain by running off somewhere else. Right. And while I was out there on the front lines, I ran into Sumika and several other people I never thought I'd see again. Including Marmo-chan, and you of course. But uh, I got careless and yet another person and got yet another person killed, leaving Sumika gravely injured in the process. Uh, by Yuko sensei standards, I mean. Uh, but for me, it was just a repeat of the same mistakes all over again. Uh, that's when I finally stopped trying to run away. It wasn't until that, then, that I really steeled my resolve. Uh, you got it. Once I returned from that mission, I learned that Sumika had been involved with the alternative program as well. In fact, she'd been a part of it for years, and in a much more critical role than me. Uh, apparently, she'd been in bad shape for a really long time, even before what happened during my mission. Her memories and psyche had been in tatters for years before we met back up again. Uh, they were able to treat her physical injuries, but psychologically, she seemed to be beyond help. She spent most of her time just staring off into space. Uh, but sometimes she'd have these violent panic attacks, where she'd start screaming and crying and shaking as if she was terrified of something, and nothing we did seemed to help. Uh, but apparently, she did amazingly well in her combat training. Even in that psychological state, she still performed great. Uh, that's what I meant when uh, I said I had too much on my plate back then. I was doing everything in my power to help restore her sanity. That's when I came up with the idea to give her a Christmas present, just like I always used to. I figured it might just help bring back her memories. In the same vein, I thought that taking her someplace we shared a lot of memories together might spark some sort of response inside her. Uh, basically, I was just grasping at straws. She's the pilot of Susanna O, oh, so technically, I can say that I was doing all this to help humanity win and secure the future for the human race. Oh, fuck my job. Ah. Yeah, but I can't deny the fact that my personal feelings for Sumika and my desire to do more for her have grown stronger and stronger as time goes on. Uh, that's what made it so hard for me to tell you guys anything. Well, other than that, it was top secret. 
while I ran, when I ran into her on that special mission, I knew once and for all that I was in love with her. Because that's when I realized that the thought of losing her again scared me more than anything else in the world. But that just made it all the more difficult to balance my professional goals with my personal feelings. I kept telling myself that I was only trying to bring her back to normal for humanity's sake, and I was just fulfilling my duty, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that I was somehow betraying you guys, somehow. Wait, did I say somehow twice in that sentence? Shake the feeling... whatever. Uh, but then I remembered everything I learned from all the people I've met over the past few years, including the old woman in Mount Tengen, and the versions of you guys I met in the previous timeline. Uh, that includes everyone in our squad, as well as their families, Major Walken and Captain Sagiri, Sergeant Jinguji, and everyone in A01. All right, I'll stop giving fuck. I'll stop giving Cuck Boy Sagiri so much flack. <sighs> but without a doubt, the people who inspired me the most were you, uh, First Lieutenant Tsukiyomi, and the Shogun. I learned so much from the three of you about loyalty to the mission, sorting out your personal emotions and adapting to the circumstances that fate places on us in. Yeah, it's thanks to you three that I've been able to maintain somewhat of a reasonable balance for this long. Soka. Uh, Captain Izumi's sacrifice during Operation 21st taught me uh, that it was possible to fill both one's professional duties and one's personal objectives at the same time. And now, I finally feel like I can move forward without any hesitation, something I owe to each and every one of you. Uh, anyway... After we got back from Operation 21st, for whatever reason, she started recovering at an unbelievable rate. She isn't completely back to normal just yet, but Sensei said that she's getting better every day. And yesterday, when Sumika was assigned to Unit A01, well, it was the first time since we were reunited that I'd seen her interacting so naturally with people. Even with me, she'd never been able to talk like that, but with you guys, she could hold a perfectly normal conversation. Sounds like she, she's managed to recover her memories, and her emotions seem to be a lot more stable now, too. It's like she's the girl I used to know again. She got dragged into a bunch of things she had no control over, got and, and hurt so badly, and then spent years cooped up in this dark, desolate room, unable to move. So, this is the first time she's been herself in years. I don't know if she's just nervous or what, but she's a lot quieter than before. She was always so positive and chipper, kind of like a hyperactive puppy. Maybe I'm asking for too much, but I really want her to get back to being that way. I'm sure you've figured this out based on the story so far, but my feelings for her are one-sided as of right now. Mm -hmm. I haven't even asked her how she feels about me, and we're obviously not going out, so it's really nothing more than that. I mean, she did cry for my help back when she was... It, uh, really in distress, but for all I know, she was just clinging to me because she didn't have anyone else. So, uh, told you it was lame. Yeah, so not a very bad. Oh, come on, you don't have to try to cheer me up. Uh, it's just gonna make me feel even more embarrassed about this. Yeah, well, welcome to the club. You've given me similar wake-up calls more times than I can count. But hey, there's nothing wrong with keeping each other honest if it helps us grow, right? Besides, I had to cut out all the classified details, so you should probably take all that with a grin of salt. Now, this next part, though, actually does have more to do with our mission than anything. Uh, to keep the Suzano O functioning at peak efficiency, it's vital that we keep Sumika in a stable emotional state, since uh, she'll be the one piloting it. I think she's having trouble adjusting to her sudden recovery, especially since we're asking her to try to perform uh, friendships again so abruptly. But according to Sensei, kickstarting her social life again should be hugely beneficial to her mental health. I don't expect you to be her best friend or anything, but I do hope you can try to work with her outside of the mission as well. Uh, 
Really? Oh, thanks a ton, Maya. Well, because you're the one who helped me get past my reluctance to talk about this stuff. I could have never been so brazen about this before. Uh, no, that's not what I meant at all. I wanted you to know because you're more than a comrade to me. You're my guiding light. No, dude, don't, you're starting to spill your spaghetti. I kind of like uh, what First Lieutenant Suzumiya is for Lieutenant Hayase. Uh, this was something that came up when I was talking to Lieutenant Munakata yesterday. She said that people never really stop growing and maturing. She told me I had gotten to the point where I was starting to understand myself as an individual. And she said uh, that people who understand themselves can struggle through a hundred identical challenges and grow a little more every single time. But when you start to worry that maybe you stayed down, straight down the wrong path, uh, that's when you need a guiding light to show you the way. Uh, that could be anyone, as long as they know who you are, who you really are deep down. Doesn't matter how old they are, or what gender, or how long you've known them. It's someone who listens to you when you're down, gives you candid advice when you need it, and smacks some sense into you when you're royally screwed up. Uh, not to lay on the pressure or anything, but you're the first person who comes to mind that fits that description, Maya. And I just thought it'd be nice if you could do something like that for Sumika as well. No pressure or anything, just wishful thinking on my part, that's all. Normally, I wouldn't even have had the guts to say this, but thanks to you, the words came out really easily. It feels a lot better knowing that Sumika had someone like you she could open up to. Since I originally wanted the two of you to bond so that Sumika would stop worrying about that weird fantasy I had, not a fantasy, it was from a different timeline, it happened, I remember, it was... It was, it was pretty good. Uh, but that barely even enters the equation for me at this point. It was kind of fucked, though, that you ruined her fortified suit by pressing the emergency, like, escape fucking medical button on it that melted it off her body. So then you ha she had to fucking sit, sit in the simulator all alone, cold, sweaty, after getting fucking raw-dogged when you ran and got her a new one. Huh? あの者の過酷な運命と比することあの、Thank you, Maya. Uh, please do help her out if you can. よいのだ。I'm not expecting miracles or anything, of course. Uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself. She doesn't have any close friends or comrades she can lean on right now. Just treating her like one would be more than enough. Hmm? Yeah, maybe so. Well... I'm no, I know I'm not much of a friend, but I hope that someday I can be a guiding light for you as well, or at least a confidant. I want you to think of me as a confidant, and I'll do everything I can to make that happen. Yeah, I know. I'm not even close to earning that right yet, but I'm going to work my ass off to get there. Uh, just you watch. One of these days, you'll have no choice but to admit it. I swear I'll make it happen. And when it does, I'll finally repay you for everything. I've still got to wipe out the beta and deal with whatever turned me into a causality conductor before I can head back home, right? That should give me plenty of time to work with. Uh, oh, right. Uh, we've got mock battles again tomorrow, don't we? Probably gonna be another long day. Hey, uh, thanks for everything. I mean it. Uh, good night. 
I couldn't tell her everything, given how much top secret information is involved, but I'm glad I at least got the chance to be upfront with her about my feelings for Sumika. It kind of feels like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders. A really big and heavy one. Uh, but I mean, uh, these are things I've never told anyone but Yuko-sensei before. It only makes sense that I feel relieved. And of course, having one other person on the team who knows what Sumika's been through makes me feel a lot less anxious about how uh, well she'll get along with the rest of the group. Looks like I owe you yet again, Maya. Sumika? It's me. In the flesh. Unlike you, who is in synthetic flesh. Huh? Oh, where's Kazumi? Nice. Perfect timing. Oh, okay. Uh, can I come in? Is this a bad time? I can come back later. Uh, then, can I come in? Man, I figured they'd give you a fancier room, but this is just identical to mine. Though, I guess we don't have any VIP barracks, really. Uh, have you been feeling today? I know you were pretty tuckered out last night, so I've been a little worried. Yeah? I'm glad to hear that. I'm pretty sure it's because she was getting more and more stable every day. If she keeps it up and forms some strong relationships with everyone, she'll be back to the cheery Sumika I remember in no time. Which is exactly how she's supposed to be, a big old ray of sunshine. Hmm? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, is that all? Hey, don't mention it. No need, no need to be all formal around me. Besides, that's not like you at all. I'm just glad you're getting back to your old self again. That's all that matters to me. She's so stable, even though she has memories from all those other timelines. Uh, Sensei wasn't kidding. I had a hard time believing it until I actually talked to Sumiko myself, but now I feel like I can finally relax around her a bit. Though that doesn't mean I can just ask her about all the horrible stuff she went through now. Uh, I should just take things slow. Uh, speaking of which, you sure seem to be enjoying yourself with everyone today. It's been a long time since I've seen you laugh like that. It really made my day. They sure are, and they're great people, too. I'm sure you already know this, but they're the reason I was able to make it this far. Yeah, probably seems like a bit of a stranger now. Well, I don't know if I'd call myself a grown-up or anything, but I did learn a lot from them. When I first started this loop, I thought all of them were just wasting time by focusing on their personal issues. After seeing how the previous timeline ended, I convinced myself that I was the only one who'd experienced real tragedy. I thought it was stupid to fight over differing beliefs and principles, too. I kept looking down on them, thinking we should just be prioritizing the survival of the human race. But that was because I had never had to deal with anything like this before. As soon as I got directly involved, I realized just how stupid I'd been. <laughs> Yes, Sensei was right. Looks like she really can't process info from all the other worlds simultaneously. Uh, but you still took me in and accepted me. But they still took me in and accepted me as one of their own. Uh, they always encouraged me or smacked some sense into me when I needed it most. Uh, they helped me in so many ways. Uh, that's why I think you could be really good friends with them too. Sure, there are some things that only you and I know about. But they're not completely out of the loop either. They're a little different from the way they were in my world, but their core personalities are the same. And they're all great people. So I hope you'll keep talking to them and enjoying their company. In a 
world as horrific as this one, I think it's really important to be able to appreciate life's simple joys, at least when you're not fighting. I don't expect any massive changes overnight, but I do hope it'll help you get back to your old spunky self sooner rather than later. Yeah, teach, teach her the fucking drill milky punch. You know, for old times' sake. Yeah, you know, the girl who'd sock me with a drill milky punch every time I made an ass of myself. Is it just me? Or is she getting more and more reserved as this conversation goes on? I know she saw that image of Maya a while ago, but I kind of get the feeling it's more complicated than just that. Could there be something else bug that's bugging her? Hey dude, you okay? Huh? Hang on a sec. She doesn't have the Santa Rabbit with her right now, does she? I know she had it with her when we came back to the base. Hey, uh, what happened to your Santa Rabbit? <laughs> I know she haven't been carrying it around lately. Uh, and not that you have to have it with you at all times, of course. Uh, you just really seemed to like it before, so I was kind of wondering what happened. Oh no, uh, she didn't lose it. Did she lose it? Is that why she's down in the dumps? Uh, did you lose it? It's okay if you did. I won't be mad. Did you break it? Okay. Okay, so she just doesn't have it on her. But that's a little strange, isn't it? I mean, she even brought it along for Operation 21st. So what gives? Oh, I think I get it. You broke it, huh? Oh, looks like I was right on the money. Well, it was handmade, so it didn't really have a lot of give. Uh, I kind of had a feeling the ears were going to break off sooner or later. <laughs> hey man, we can just slap some wood glue in there, or you could even bring it down to like the fucking, down to like the metal tech shop in the hangar and be like, hey, can you guys like drill some little holes and add some uh, like metal supports to the ears? They'd be like, yeah, no problem, man. You know, just just bring a cute girl with you and they'd be like, ah, I, can, I see. Mm. First they'd be jealous, but then they then they'd help you. I can fix it if you want, though. <laughs> Seriously, it's not a big deal. Just bring it on over, all right? Uh, so that's what she was so upset about. <laughs> what am I ever going to do with this girl? Uh, but hey, at least that means she really liked it, so I can't complain too much. Unless it's, like, completely sawdust. Uh, what are you waiting for? Come on, bring it here. Hmm? Uh, this doesn't look broken to me. Uh, so, what's the problem? Uh, Sumika, what's this all about? Huh? Sorry for what? Ah. Huh? What's that s supposed to mean? Sumika? Why are you giving it back? What happened? Sumika? You feeling, uh, feeling a little, a little self-conscious about yourself after, uh, seeking the little, little bit of inside of everyone else's mind? What do you mean, you can't keep it? Did you want me to make you something else, or...? So what? Is it just uncomfortable for you to be given a gift based on something that belonged to a different Sumika? Okay, then what gives? Why don't you want it? She's not answering, so maybe it really is because it's based on my memories of the Sumika I grew up with. But what else am I supposed to do? Those are the memories of Sumika that I have, other than a few that we made in the branch of uh, the timeline I ran away to. I don't know anything about this world, Sumika. Oh, wait, the Sumika I grew up with. And the one branch in the... Uh, and the one in the branch that I ran away to. Of course, how could I have forgotten something so simple? The only Sumika I ever confessed my feelings to was the one I grew up with. Even when we kiss in the altered branch, she was the one who confessed to me. Oh, that's it. That's gotta be it. I never actually told her how I feel in this world. 
All I, uh, all I did whenever she had a breakdown was talk about my memories from my world. Uh, so she only knows how I feel because she's been reading my mind. Uh, which was fine, up until recently, because her memories were all mixed up with the ones she'd inherited from other worlds. But her sensei is right, and she's now capable of discerning which memories come from which world. <laughs> Uh, in retrospect, I did only start uh, getting involved with Sumika in this world for the sake of the mission, so that I could restore order to the timelines and help humanity win. But it's also true that I didn't, it didn't take long for my feelings to change and for her to become my primary motivation for fighting. Ah, damn it. And here I was, bragging about how well I understood her. <laughs> Okay, I think it's high time to uh, set the record straight. I gotta go all out and let her know exactly how I feel. Sumika? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been leaning on you way too much. Even in my world, and the one I went back to, I was just leeching off your strength. And in this world, I haven't even told you how I feel about you. Sumika? I love you. That was a nice squeal. Uh, you're more important to me than anyone else. I realize that you and I haven't shared a lot of memories in this world. Heck. There have even been times when I've caught myself wondering if maybe it wasn't me you fell for in this timeline at all. I'm not trying to force you to go out with me or anything. I'd love you no matter what. Uh, but I'd really like it if you would at least hold on to that Santa Rabbit for me. What are you sorry about? Are you saying you won't, you uh, just won't take it, or? <laughs> how am I supposed to understand if you won't even tell me how what you're apologizing for? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why won't you tell me? Don't tell me. It's not because of what you saw during Operation 21st, is it? Then, what is it? I just... I need to know why you're turning me down. Please. Is it because you really did fall for someone else? <laughs> I see. Well, I won't hold that against you. Uh, but what the hell, though? If you were in love with someone else all along, then why was it my name you kept screaming during all those panic attacks? Then what is it? Oh, are you all up in her shit right now, bud? You need to take a chill pill, huh? Or do you mean, like, emotionally? Let you go? I'm not trying to, to force you to. Sumika, I swear, I'm not... 
Ah! Sumika! Oh, what the hell is wrong with me? I'm such an asshole. She turned me down, but I kept trying to force her to tell me why. Oh, what kind of jackass does that? No, this isn't right. What the hell is going on here? I don't get it. How could things go so wrong so fast? Oh, God damn it. <sighs> How did it come to this? She's not upset about that image of May and me, and she didn't fall for some other guy. So I have no idea how to interpret what Sumika just said. If she didn't have any feelings for me, then why would that image disturb her so badly that she suffered abnormal ODL degradation? Degradation. I don't get it. I'm just thinking in circles at this point. I may have matured a bit, but I still don't know how to cope with my own emotional issues. God, I'm pathetic. I never would have expected Sumika to shoot me down. I didn't have any proof that she'd want me, so I just assumed uh, she would because of how she was acting when her memories were all jumbled up. I guess I was reading too much into things. I was acting like her boyfriend on the basis of my own assumptions. I was such an ass. Ugh. This is the first time I've ever been rejected. Yeah, shit sucks, bro. Though, I guess that doesn't mean a lot, since it was only the first time I asked a girl out. Yep. Yep, that's usually how it goes. I didn't think it would hurt quite this bad. Yep, time to go start listening to some, like, mid-2000s fucking, like, emo rock. Uh, someone who's ever fallen in love knows there's a risk their feelings won't be reciprocated. The fact that they still put themselves out there and confess, even knowing they might be rejected, is incredible to me. I really am just a kid. How could I have made it to this far in life without ever experiencing this? <sighs> I've just been wallowing in my own misery since then. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes. It's hard having Sumika's room right next door, too. I keep perking up at every little noise I hear. I couldn't handle the fact that there was only a single wall between the two of us, so I got up and left. I knew it wasn't going to fix anything. But I decided to come here and visit Sergeant Jinkuchi and Captain Izumi anyway. Try to try to get some, some girl advice from them? I don't know about Sergeant Jinkuchi, but the captain said people used to talk to her about their love lives, so I feel like she'd hear me out. <laughs> Well, now that we failed that first part, can we die? Just roll over in a ditch and just let go? Or maybe she'll just be mad at me for breaking my promise. Hmm? Uh, someone's here. Is it the first lieutenants? Uh, I really don't feel like talking to them right now. Uh-huh. Uh, hang on a second. Whoever it is... It Seems like they're alone. Wait, that's... Uh, Lieutenant Tsukiyomi! Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. I thought you were a goner. Of course I was worried. We hadn't seen hide nor hair of you since the operation ended. Couldn't care less about that shit. We have... I have so many pirated copies of that, it's it's a non-issue. Well, both, obviously. <laughs> you know, it's a... It's a real mood when you go and pirate free software just because you know where the link is. <laughs> uh, sorry, but I'm afraid I've learned how to deal with your trick questions by now. Oh, thank goodness. Such a relief to know she's okay. So, when did you get back to base? Want a little victory parade? Of course. They were holding a funeral for the fallen soldiers of Operation 21st. She must have been attending that. Okay, maybe it was a little more solemn affair, but... I see. And the second lieutenant? Nuronbujida. Gathering their belongings? So then, you're being stationed somewhere else? 
さっきの作戦で帝国は戦力を消耗しすぎたからな。All the way up in the high,、uh, Hokkaido, huh? 前にも言ったが、この横浜での任期は31日までだ。貴様に会うのも、これが最後かもしれんな。I don't think that'll be the case. Yeah, could be. There's only three days left until she leaves, and it's not like we bump into each other very often. Is she planning on leaving without seeing Maya?、Uh, by the way, are you doing all, what are you doing all the way out here, First Lieutenant? Huh? Her Highness personally asked you to? Eliminating Sato Kashima doesn't mean that we're out of the woods just yet, but I can definitely understand that it's a huge relief for everyone in Japan. Your Highness, thank you so much for your consideration. I just know Captain Izumi and Lieutenant Kashiwagi would be deeply touched by this gesture. So, I think I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going So, what have their families been told? Ow. Yeah, they are. イスミ隊員もさぞや枕を高くしておられることであろう。は、huh? 貴様も貴様たちも本当によくやってくれた。First Lieutenant。殿下から伺ったのだ。A ゼロ番部隊や貴様の働きをな。Oh, that's right. Her Highness isn't just a figurehead anymore. Makes sense that she'd have been briefed on the particulars of Operation Twenty First. Not to mention. I'm sure she was worried sick about Maya. Maya Sama no Asho Hippari Yakta's Bakari da to Motte Tanga Takumashku Natta Munoda. Originally, meaning back in basic training or during the 12 5 incident. Well, not that it matters. Point is, Lieutenant Tsukiyomi's acknowledged my efforts. I'll just take the compliment. Well, you guys were pretty fantastic out there yourselves, too. If you hadn't held the line at Till the very end, Whiskey Unit wouldn't have been able wouldn't have been able to withdraw successfully. So they took it. Isumi Tai no Shiru Mani no te, take Oko no Senyoko, Mamoroto Stanisugi. Oh, man, you and Maya both just take such long pauses between your sentences.、Uh, Japan's part of humanity, too, you know. I don't think there's any point in making a distinction anymore. Kisamatoa. 125事件の時に似たような話で散々やり合ったな。Like I said, globalist gang for life, dog. It doesn't matter who you're fighting for, as long as you don't lose sight of your own goals and obligations. <laughs> That's the philosophy that the captain and Kashiwaki and Maya and me and everyone else in our unit have been fighting to uphold. That was a lot of ands in that sentence. <laughs> Him I do for another scolding. I wish I could. I wish I could agree, but it seems like whenever push comes to shove, I still find ways to screw everything up. After what just happened with Sumika, I really can't take a compliment like that. Though it's probably wrong of me to bring that up when it has nothing to do with Lieutenant Sukiyomi. Well, pardon me. Kekko. Say, she's taking him a say, Joe Stayodana. Matured, huh? Maybe in some ways, but not where it matters most. 
I mean, I just let my personal reason for fighting slip between my fingers. Right after getting on my high horse and telling Maya she had to find one of her own, of course. Oh, that's right, Maya. I have to tell her about Maya. Uh, by the way, I wanted to talk about that request you made to me before the operation. Hmm? Nanda. Well, I think I can safely say that Maya will be just fine from now on. <laughs> uh, she told me she can find that she... Ooh, let's try that again. Uh, she told me that she finally feels like she's in a position where she can fight her own battles now. But she also said that her main reason for fighting hasn't changed in the slightest. By that, she meant that she'd still be fighting in the name of the Shogun and her fellow countrymen. I'm sure Lieutenant Tsukiyomi understands that. And now, uh, she's focusing on finding something she never had before. A more personal reason to fight. She said that she'd be um, more than just... Uh, oh. She said that would be more than enough to keep her going. Soka. So, I don't think you have anything to worry about. <laughs> and for the record, she's been my guiding light for a long time. So, I'm going to do anything I can to help her when she needs it. I've always been counting on her to help me out, so I think it's high time I repaid the favor. Uh, that's right. Whenever I lose my way, she's the one who's always there to steer me back on course, even if her guidance sometimes comes in the form of a smack upside the head. <laughs> right now, I want to do everything in my power to grow, so that she can see me the same way. I don't want to stand in her shadow forever. So that's probably what was worrying her the most. She looks so much more relieved now. I really should have told her all this sooner. So, Girl trouble. Huh? Oh, I just had some stuff on my mind, so I was hoping the captain could give me some advice. Hey, she told me I could come here if I needed to talk, so I think it's fine. <laughs> Uh, besides, Sergeant Jinkuchi's here, too. I was planning to ask both of them to help me out. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's fine. I'm glad we were able to talk before you had to leave. Is this really going to be the last time I see her? Maybe I should ask her to go see Maya. Uh, thank you for stopping by. It means a lot that you take the time to come here and pay your respects, and deliver her highness's regards as well. Uh, next time you're in the capital, be sure to give her my thanks. I'd really appreciate it. I hope so. Uh, take care, First Lieutenant. Give my regards to the Second Lieutenants as well. <laughs> so long, Lieutenant Tsukiyomi. I'm sure what she really wanted to say was, take care of Maya. But now that Maya's found her own way, she felt it wasn't her place, so she didn't. Ah, damn it. That was so stupid of me. How could I have ever thought about asking her to go see Maya one last time? Neither of them would have uh, appreciated having me butt into their affairs over such a shallow sentiment. Even though she's uh, resigned, Lieutenant Tsukiyomi is still just as concerned about Maya as ever. But from now on, she just has to resist the urge to be protective. Even after all the progress I've made, I still can't hold a candle to that kind of resolve that those two have. Man, this sucks. There's no way I'll ever be a guiding light for me at this rate. And I'm not doing much better with Sumika either. I haven't been thinking at all about what she wants. That's why I can't handle things the way Lieutenant Tsukiyomi does. Whether Sumika wants me or not, my feelings for her will never change. I seem to keep on supporting her the way I have been this entire time. 
But I can't uh, reliably do that until I start being more considerate of her feelings. Yeah, don't don't be an incel about this. It's it's okay to be friend zoned. Like it's fine. Uh, it's probably gonna be hard, especially given how oblivious I was to her feelings back in my world. But that's what I've got to do. Besides, I swore I was gonna make everything up to her, didn't I? If I just force my feelings onto her, it will be no different than trying to force Maya and Lieutenant Tsukiyomi to meet again. And let's not forget that this isn't just a problem for me, either. I mean, sure, now that Sumika's gotten a reasonable le level of stability, she could theor theoretically perform her duties as the double unit without having me without me even being around. Ooh, 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 that was a rough one. But should we really be banking on that? If this keeps up, it's entirely possible that my very existence will be enough of a distraction to completely throw off her flow in the next operation. If we can't clear the air between us soon, this could cause some serious problems for everyone. Uh, Lieutenant Tsukiyomi, uh, thank you so much. Talking with you really helped me come back to my senses. In fact, I can't help but wonder if maybe the captain was responsible for bringing Lieutenant Tsukiyomi here to guide me. Yeah, don't fucking break him this time. Sorry, guys, I've got to go. Uh, go ahead and eat without me. Oh, finally done with training. I've been so anxious about how to handle this drama with Sumika, I couldn't concentrate at all. I did get better simulator results than yesterday, though. And thankfully, didn't make any embarrassing mistakes during field training. I'm gonna assume this noise is him taking off his fortified suit and getting dressed. Oh, which is good. I can't neglect my training, or I'll be letting my personal feelings mess things up for the rest of the unit. When we got out of the simulators, Sumiko wouldn't even make eye contact with me. <clears throat> oh god, my throat. <coughs> she also turned down class class rep's lunch invitation, saying she had to go visit Yuko Sensei. Still, I'm guessing she really just didn't want to be around me any longer. But considering that's a relatively normal thing for her to do, the others probably thought nothing of it. Even Maya didn't raise an eyebrow, despite everything we talked about yesterday. Alright. I've got to go find Sumika and try to clear the air after what happened yesterday. Whether she rejects me or not, I have to make sure it doesn't interfere with the mission. That much is for certain. But even so, I can't keep these feelings bottled up forever. I need to get this off my chest. I've been trying as hard as I can to see things from Sumika's perspective. I was up all night trying to decipher everything she said yesterday. While it's possible that she's just dancing around the real issue to let me down easy, there's no way for me to figure out what she, what else she might be hiding. So, I'm choosing to take her at her word. She said it's not about the pornographic memories, and it's not because she fell in love with someone else, but nonetheless, she can't return my feelings. And after a lot of internal deliberation, I think I might have, might just have an idea of why that might be. Which is why I've got to talk to her again get everything out on the table. Sumika, it's me. You there? Well, looks like she's in back yet. In which case, maybe she's in the simulator room? Ah, damn it, Sumika. Where the heck did you run off to? She's not in the simulator room or the PX, and she's not down in the restricted area either. And neither was Yuko-sensei, for that matter. Maybe I should swing by her room again. It's been over an hour since I was last there, so maybe she's back by now. Oh, Kazumi! Hey, uh, have you seen Sumika? How far downstairs? In Sensei's office? Uh, do you think she'd still be there now? Ah, dang, then I must have just missed her. 
Ugh, I know I shouldn't have uh, taken such a long shower. Uh, do you have any idea where she might be now? Ah, sweet, thanks. Oh. How do you know? Oh, right. You're tracking her position, huh? Hi. Uh, then tell me where she is. I need to know. Huh? Uh, what's the matter, Cosme? You're not gonna tell me? I'll try to have a fucking big boy and girl conversation with her. What? I mean, I don't mind telling you, but why do you ask? Besides, can't you just read my mind if you're curious what my intentions are? Well, that is very, uh, very considerate of you. Huh? Wait, so Yuka-sensei doesn't think it's necessary anymore? But uh, doesn't that mean Sumika's no longer under surveillance? They don't even need to keep an eye on her anymore? Nice. I mean, it certainly sounds that way. Uh, wait, why do I care? It has no effect on me or what I need to do right now. I'm not acting on orders here or doing this for anyone else's benefit. This is my problem and mine alone. All right, Kazumi. Uh, the truth is, I confessed my feelings to Sumika yesterday. To be honest, I was pretty pathetic. I only did it after she'd uh, already made me take back my Christmas present. Uh, that's when I realized I had never really expressed my feelings for her in this world, so I just sort of went for it. But she turned me down. Actually, no, that's putting it mildly. It was more like a flat-out rejection. I figured that if I just laid my emotions out on the table, things would work out. But I never really considered how she might feel about things. And I just wanted to tell her that I understand that now. Uh, partly because I don't want it to affect our ability to carry out our duties, but also because I want to set things right. Um, that's all I need to talk to her about. I'll go find her myself, though. It's my problem, and I shouldn't have asked you to solve it for me. Uh, that wasn't cool. Sorry. Ah, man. I've got a lot to learn from you, too. You're making an effort to change yourself for the better, too. I seriously respect that. Well, I guess I'd better get going. I highly doubt she went off base, so I'm sure I'll find her eventually. Later. You gonna help us this one time? What's up? Huh? あの、かにいます。I will. Don't worry. We're gonna talk this out, and I'll make sure she knows that there's no need for her to feel all anguished about what happened. Thanks, Cosme. Really. Uh, Sumika? Takeru-chan. Uh, what are you doing up here? I mean, it's too dark out to enjoy the view. Uh, what gives? Uh, just vibing? That's cool. Sometimes I like to just sit in the dark and look at the ceiling, too. Uh, wait, Sumika, we need to talk. <laughs> we definitely do after a response like that. Okay, then how about I talk and you just listen? I know, but this will be the last time, I promise. So please, just hear me out. Please. Uh, thanks. I'll make this quick. Uh, first of all, I think I owe you an apology. I kept trying to force you to explain why you wouldn't accept my present without even trying to figure it out for myself. 
And as far as rejecting me goes, uh, don't worry about it. I didn't come here to try to change your mind. I care about you a lot, obviously. It's important to me that you and I get along. Of course, it's also really important for the sake of humanity as a whole, so I wanted to clear the air and make sure things won't be too awkward between us uh, for you to carry out your duties. I need to make sure you know exactly where I'm coming from, uh, both for my sake and for everyone else's. Uh, in my own world, I spent years mooching off your kindness, and when I ran back there, I learned I leaned on your strength. Uh, my whole life, I've always just been I've always just taken advantage of you. I took you and all the things you did for me for granted. I guess I felt like being your childhood friend just in entitled me to all of it. And if it wasn't for and it wasn't just you, of course. I thought the peace, freedom, and prosperity I enjoyed were all God-given rights, not privileges. It wasn't until I got dumped into this world that I started to realize just how stupid and spoiled I really was. Only after losing everything I ever cared about, and learning to live in this hellhole, did I finally understand just how incredibly fortunate I'd been. I would realized that I'd have to earn all those things I wanted, with my own blood, sweat, and tears, and other various bodily fluids. But, for all my newfound maturity, I still let myself cling to the comforting delusions that you just didn't exist in this world. I didn't even try to find out for myself if you'd, if you'd ever existed here. I just let Yuko-sensei tell me what I wanted to hear. I told myself I understood reality, but I never went looking for the truth. It wasn't until I came to this timeline that I finally woke up. Watching and listening to the people around me, I realized how foolish I'd been. But I still ran back home to my world, hurting you and Marmo-chan in the process. I made a complete mess of everything. Only then, when I'd screwed up in the worst possible way, did it finally hit home that there was nowhere left to run. I don't want to keep running away from my mistakes anymore. In fact, I can tell you right now that I won't. It's a vicious cycle, and I'm going to do everything I can to break out of it. Uh, so yeah, I know I screwed up yesterday, but I'm going to own up to that and do my best to ensure it never happens again. I know that was a uh, long lead-in, but I wanted to give you the idea of where I'm coming from here. See, what I was trying to do yesterday was express my emotions to you in no uncertain terms. Uh, kind of like what you'd done for me in the other worlds. But in retrospect, I can see that I wasn't really taking your feelings into consideration. I spent a long time last night thinking about what you'd said. And I trust that you were being honest with me. I don't suspect you of lying to me or making excuses to try to dance around the real issue. Even if you were, I've still decided to take you at your word, so there's no point in dwelling on it. Uh, for all I know, those assumptions might be wrong, but I tried my best to figure out for myself. I'm not going to be—I'm not going to demand that you tell me the real reason or anything. I've been uh, really insensitive. By saying that I still loved you as much as I loved any other Sumika, I was putting a lot of pressure on you. I was It was totally ridiculous of me to assume that you'd uh, reciprocate those feelings just because you'd inherited the memories of the other Sumikas who loved me. Uh, but yesterday, it finally dawned on me. I'm not the Takaru you're looking for. I'm just an imposter. And I should have realized that a lot sooner. I'm really sorry. I feel like I've completely disrespected your feelings. No matter how closely we might resemble one another, I can never replace him. This entire time, I'd convinced myself that I was the only real Takaru. It's pretty messed up when you think about it. It's like I've been totally disregarding the other Sumi because I've loved. Oh, 
both the one I grew up with, who always believed and supported me, and the one whose shoulder I cried on, whose entire life I ruined by being a causality conductor. I really am a pretty lousy human being. I think that, somewhere deep down, I was trying to forget how much it hurts to lose them. I was using you to fill the void they left in my heart. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I was just running away again, just looking for someone else to lean on. Ah, damn it, damn it, god damn it! Ah, forgive me. You've got to forgive me, Sumika. And he's crying. I know I've hurt you in ways I can't even imagine. And I'm so, so sorry. It's <laughs> Huh? Well, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah, you're kind of the anomaly of the of the Sumikas. For what? Sumika. That's not true. You didn't deserve that horrible accident. It was all my fault for bringing this world's causality into that one. Sumika. How am I being ridiculous? What am I overthinking? Huh? そんなこと言ったら偽物は私の方だよ。いや。アスミカ。私は001ユニットなんだよ。私は人間じゃないんだよ。こんな風に悲しんだり笑ったりしてるけど、全部真似事なんだよ。アスミカ、ストップ。機
Yeah. God, I'm such a tool. It, here I told myself that I'd accept any answer she might give me. I basically got what I wanted, didn't I? This is uh, how it should be. あ、ふくしれ you did? でも安心していいよ。タケルちゃんは特殊な存在だから外に放り出せないでしょ。エクセム3開発の貢献を考慮して福司令が雑用として使ってくれるって。だから職には困らないよ。Got to say boys, my jimmies are pretty fucking rustled at the moment. だけども セキュリティパスは募集されるから部隊には近寄れないと思うまあ、エイシじゃなくなるんだから当然だよねおう、we're on the plus side, at least we got fucking, like, day and a half off each week for quote-unquote training, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. What? Did you forget something else? Yeah. What? Where's this coming from? I see. Yeah. Alright, let's let's be real. Sumika's just putting on a really fucking strong front here and like you know you know you know how the shit goes. You know, you know she doesn't mean it, like, deep down, but... But still. Still. F fucking Maximum Russell. Ah, damn it. My mind's gone blank. I can't think of anything, no matter how hard I try. Bye-bye, huh? So, I guess that's it, then. I don't know what just happened, but there's one thing that's been made crystal clear. My time with Sumika and all the others is over. Guess we can fucking work the gate with Soldier 1 and 2. They're pretty cool guys. They'll let us hang out. And what's more, I'll never be able to get rid of whatever made me a causality conductor. I won't be able to fix the other timelines before it's too late. Not that I have to wait for the next loop. Not if I have to wait for the next loop. It's all over. I don't feel like going back to my room. I keep trying to think about what comes next and how I should handle this, but nothing comes to me. It feels like time's just slowed to a crawl. It hasn't even been ten minutes since she left, but I could swear I've been sitting here for hours. <sighs> hey, uh. I just got fired. I'm the one who should be asking questions here. Uh, don't sneak up on me like that. Uh, it's, it's windy, man. Fuck off. Right? I guess I must have been spacing out. Not May's fault. So, what uh, brings you up here? Can't imagine you just wanted to take in the view. Oh, right. Your nightly workout routine. Man. Why does it feel like you're always coming to find me? Yeah, you're probably right. 
Well, don't worry. You'll never have to come looking for me again. I'm never going to come up here with Sumika again. And of course, I'm not even going to be a member of A01 anymore. Go ahead, take a wild guess. Yeah, I got rejected. Hard. Uh, it was pretty shitty. I was being a total idiot. Man, I can't believe what an arrogant prick I was. Oh, sorry, I was just talking to myself. I'm not trying to vent to you or anything. Oh, okay. だが、そなたが少しでも楽になるというのであれば、愚痴であっても喜んで付き合うぞ。Uh, no, it's fine. I wouldn't want to impose. It's just pathetically stupid is all. Talking about it would probably only make both of us feel worse. Well, basically, after she turned me down yesterday, I tried my best to come to terms with it. I didn't want it to completely ruin our relationship, you know. So, I met with her again today to tell her not to worry about it, that I was the one in the wrong, and that there was n that there were no hard feelings, but it completely backfired on me. Apparently, I was really starting to get on her nerves, and she made that painfully clear to me. She'd been hiding it from me because she didn't want to hurt my feelings, but I pushed her over the edge and forced her to say it. Uh, she was completely fed up with me by that point. Not that I blame her, really, but yeah. She said it was a huge relief to finally get it off her chest. Maybe that's why she perked up a bit at the end. She got all cheery and thanked me for everything I'd done for her. Ah, damn it. Look at me running my mouth after I said I wouldn't. Just goes to show how much of a loser I am. Damn, if someone like Mei is picking up on it, you know. It's, it's pretty obvious that Sumika's being, being a fucking weirdo right now. What makes you say that? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Well, what is it? What's your, what's tickling your womanish intuition? Was she crying? Uh huh. Yeah. Huh? Sumika was crying? Nah, that can't be. Sure, weren't you seeing things? Yeah. Uh, two meters? Uh, yeah, maybe she just wanted to go strike up conversation, but you know, it's it's a, it's a little awkward when someone's just crying. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 Oh, you're such a saint, I swear. It's took like the first chance you got to work with her. Nani,お話そうなどとあれこれ考えているうちに、鏡は私が立っているすぐそばまでまっすぐ近づいてきたのだ。一向に気づく様子がないので、声をかけると、鏡は驚いた様子で私を見たのだ。その顔は涙でひ
Kagami no Taido Niwa, Nani era Jijoga Arisodana. Another explanation? Naniko Muyata Rushua Nainoka. I mean, not really. Tatoeba Otagai Urikotoba ni Kaikotoba de Kanjo Tekina Kotoba Butskete Shimata Toka. Not particularly. It was it was all fairly civil until the very end there, when she got kind of snippety. If I was calm enough to pick out a bunch of subtle details, things wouldn't have gotten this ugly in the first place. I mean, easier said than done. だが、鏡の態度は最後だけを見ても明らかに矛盾がある。鏡の泣きようはただごとではなかった。よほど辛い思いをしたと見るのが自然であろう。これはあくまで試験だが、話を聞く限り、心にもないことを言わざるを得な
Uh, anyway, we'll we'll see all that revelations and more next time. Hope to see you then. Later.